Uh-huh, I sure will. A good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. <laughs> Got a radio show. Um, five things that I know successful people have to do. To be successful, the principles are the same. You can apply it to anything. You know, if you want to be happily married, you know, whatever it is, the principles of success are the same. There are a series of things that you have to do. You cannot skip the steps of success. If you do, you're going to have to go back and step on them anyway. So here's, 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 a, here's a part, man, that I want you all to understand about me and, 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 and about how to look at it. You know, uh, you, you cannot underestimate faith and prayer. You just can't. You cannot underestimate the power of faith and the power of prayer. See, for me, this is just for me now. This ain't in the scripture nowhere. This is just something I discovered. What prayer did for me was, was it tied me to my creator. It gave me a sense, and I'm describing it this way, but I'm telling you it's deeper than this. But it gave me a sense that I wasn't alone. And in actuality, I wasn't. But prayer helped connect me to the power source that was available to me to get through, get around, or get over whatever it was that was in the way. Whether it was just a period I stretch I had to go through of hard work, it had a period I had to go through to learn some lessons, uh, some periods I had to go through from having to pay for some of the mistakes I've made, whatever the case may be, prayer gave me a decided advantage Especially, uh oh, here we go. Especially over my enemies. Now, the majority of people in my life that were my enemies, I didn't want them to be my enemies. Make no mistake about this. But through the thing called life, some things went down, some things happened from here and there and went over here and over that way, and a person became my enemy. The majority of enemies I had came out of nowhere. I have no reason to even see why they are my enemies. But, you know, life goes on, man. It happens from time to time. Some some people just won't let it go. See, some people in their uh, quest to do something to you or to make you pay, they just won't let it go. Well, it may cause you some discomfort and some of it may be lies about you and, and all of this and all of that, but you that, that, that can't prohibit you from going forward. So what I'm saying is prayer gave me the strength, wisdom, understanding, and courage to either go through it, go around it, or go over it. But it happened. I do not know how I could have made it without faith and without prayer. It it would have something would have got me. YouTube would have got me. The bloggers would have got me. My partners that I grew up with that used to laugh behind my back, they would have got me. My friend that went over to my mother's house one time and told her, you know what Steve's problem is? He out there telling them jokes. He just lazy. He don't want to work. That would have got me. They didn't know. I ain't really mad at them because they was just, all they was doing was basing they. Uh, conversations and passing judgment based on what they knew, based on what they believed. They didn't believe I was going to make it. But but that's them, though. If it was not for the faith, which is the belief in things that you cannot see, I wouldn't have made it. Because I would have listened to everybody else who didn't see me getting here and went along with it. And then prayer, oh my goodness, man. How many times has prayer bailed me out? Prayer has bailed me out. Prayer still bailing me out. <laughs> Tell you the truth, man. Quiet as it's kept. 
prayer, that connection to your heavenly father, that connection to your creator, that connection to that source of power and inspiration, that connection of never feeling that you're alone. You know, I was watching uh, Bishop Jakes on uh, TV yesterday, and it was a repeat. And one of the things he was talking about, well, let me just get to the gist of it. I was going through a portion of my life, and I, and I, and I went through it for some years, y'all. I had gotten myself into a jam that lasted for years. I'm telling you, for years, with some serious consequences to follow for years. And I was so busy looking at where I was at. I was sulking sometimes, man. I'd get on the radio, man, I'd be just done. I was sulking. My, 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 my spirit had gotten low. I had gotten tired of the fight. And I, I would I would come on some mornings, man, and I would try I would try not to let on, but I was hurting. I was because I had been in it for years, man. I had been in this thing for years. And one thing I was doing, I was so busy looking at where I was at. And when I was watching Bishop Jake, he he preached this sermon. He was talking about so busy looking at where you at that you don't even realize that God has been with you the entire time. And you know what, man, just yesterday, just yesterday I heard this, and I text him, I text Bishop Jakes, and I thanked him, because it was an old message, I could tell. And I called, I text him up, and I said, man, thank you so much, I was just watching you on TV, and you told me, man, something that I that I'll always remember that whatever you're going through that he's there with you the whole time but see well sometimes when you're so busy looking at where you at you don't even notice where he is and see sometimes man that that helped me and that's going to help me in the future to realize that what I'm going through that he's there he's there with me and he's gonna protect me and he ain't gonna let my enemies overcome me and he ain't gonna let nobody overtake me and he ain't going to let me go under because he's there. It's just you can't be so busy looking at where you at that you don't take notice of where he at. God is always there. He's always available. And the best way to tap into that and know it is you got to pray. Prayer has changed my life. Prayer can change your life. You can become something if you just pray. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of International Women's Day today, I would like to open the show by saying, I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. Uh If I have to beg, plead for your sympathy, I don't mind, because you mean that much to me. Ain't too proud to beg, please don't leave me, girl. Ain't too proud to please, baby, baby. Don't you go. I heard a proud man. (laughs) Verse two. (laughs) Half a man with no sense Uh of pride. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Again, why I started like that, I do not know. 
But I wake up in the morning and I go with however it go for me. I thanked him this morning. First thing I did, unlike yesterday. I woke up this morning full of praise and gratitude. Because without God, I would be nothing. I don't know who you think you are. I don't care what you think you've accomplished. I'm going to tell you right now, if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't even have breath. Just as simple as that. And without breath, tell me what would you have. Hmm. So why are we trying to figure out ways to pat ourselves on the back? We need to pat him on the back and say thank you, appreciate you for everything you are to me and everything you got coming to me. I done gave up trying to figure it out. You know, I really have, man. I'm at this point in my life now where, look, God, whatever you got for me, come on and give it to me because it's been good so far. So now I ain't even pray. I, I, you know, I ain't make no phone calls yesterday. I ain't, you know, whatever. Whatever y'all want to do, fine, fine, yeah. fine. God going to give me what he want me to have. I am tired of going to meetings and asking people and, and, and negotiating. I really am, man. I just sat down yesterday and said, Lord, take the wheel. I'm your child. This your show. I got a part in it, a very, very small part. Mm. Grant me the desires of my heart if that's in your will. But do it your way. Maybe I've been going about it the wrong way. Maybe I won't want stuff that ain't good for me. Just what you want me to have that's good for me. And just, I just ask you one thing that it could could it just be a lot though? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your goodness is, <laughs> whatever goodness you got for me, just give me a <laughs> lot of it. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I want. I just want a lot. You know, you know what I'm saying? You, and I'm not. That ain't being greedy. It's just if God is good to you, and He's full of grace and favor, yes, sir. Could I just have a lot of that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Huh. Mm-hmm. Just give me a lot of it. I don't skip. I, don't, I ain't asking you for no money. I ain't asking you for no for no nothing. I, I would love to have a long, healthy life. I would appreciate that. And with that, I'd love to have means to do what I want to do. But if you if if you just hold me right where I am right now, I can ride like this. I ain't got to get no healthier, but I don't want to get no sicker. I ain't got to have no more money, but I don't want to lose none. <laughs> and I just want to live my life, right? You ain't got to do nothing. All right, I'm good. I'm letting you know I'm good. Thank you for this here right here. Just don't take nothing. Yeah. Okay. Man. Thank oh, you, man. Lord. That's a prayer right there. Man, yes, man. it is. On International man. Women's Day, Steve. Thank you. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, the nephew will run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. Nephew, what you got today? I got it. 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 it. On International Women's Day. Yes. I have. Are your lights on? Are your lights on? All right. All right, let's go. Cat, come on. (laughs) Don't play with it. Let's go. Hello? Hello. uh, Is... is I'm trying to reach a. Who's calling? This, this, my, they call me Pepper. I live. Uh, I, I think I actually live in an apartment behind you. I think my my our apartments are up against each other. Do you are you in um in unit? Who want to know? Um, actually, I'm wanting to know. I'm calling you. I got a little bit of a problem. I actually live in uh, in which is the apartment that that's uh, our apartments are, are back to back with each other, mm-hmm. and and. I don't mean no harm, man, but you, you are a though, right? Yes. Okay. Here's here's what's going on. It took me a long time to try to figure this out. But when you come home in the evening and you turn your lights on, my my oven and stove come on. And I'm talking about every aisle on my stove is on and burning hot. How do you know that's because when I turn my lights on? I, I I just I mean I didn't figure it out. It just seemed like every time. I mean I hear you when you close your door, and and I, I, every evening I'm like, why is my oven and my stove coming on? And I'm talking about my whole kitchen just hundred degrees in there behind the stove being on like that. Okay, um, did you call maintenance? From my understanding, I'm on the list, and they're not gonna get to me for a, a couple of days now. So I'm not, I'm asking you, Miss, if you don't mind, to to not have your lights on until they come get this fixed. Okay, so you asking me not to turn on my lights for three or four days and, you know, to sit in the dark. 
Well, I'm just saying, it's, go, it's only going to be for a couple of days. I know it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but I mean, I can't be over here in the house, you know, damn, they're about to burn down. Are you listening to what you're saying? You're asking me to sit in the dark. You know, I got a baby. I can't sit in the dark. Okay. I mean, do y'all have any candles or something y'all can work with or something like that? Um, I have to give my baby food, milk. I mean, really, you want me to sit in the dark and you don't want me to turn anything on? You know, I got to feed my baby. I understand, and 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 and, I, and much respect to you and your child. I, I much respect. But what I'm trying to explain to you is, I mean, we have to look at the big hazard here. The bigger hazard is is that I'm over here with fire on. Okay, you know? first of all, where are you getting this we from? How am I involved in your situation? I have because nothing you're the one that's going got on the in your house. Your life is patched in some kind of way to my oven and stove. Okay, but I still I don't have anything to do with that. You know, you need to call management or I'll, maintenance I'll call, um, listen, or whatever, but I'll I don't call, have anything to I'll, do with that. I'll, and I, I want to know, how do you know when I get home and turn on my lights? I mean, like, are you looking in my window or something? Are you a peeping Tom? Do I need to call 911? You don't need to call nobody on me. Now, what we need to do is get somebody over here and fix this oven and the stove. That's what we got to get done. But until then, right now, you can't turn them lights on. Oh, I'm turning on my lights. Like, I mean, okay. I know you ain't trying to regulate what I do in my house. I'm, listen, I'm going to tell you just like this here. I'm going to need you to keep them lights off until maintenance get over here in two days. Now, if if, if I see this stove come on and, and all these uh, eyes on this on this uh, stove come on, then I'm going to come back over there and we're going to have to rectify the problem. But I cannot have this oh, coming so on. You threat, and, so you threatening me now? I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I am not. I'm telling you not to turn the lights on. That's what I'm asking you to do. Well, I can't sit in the dark, and I'm going to turn on my light, so, you know, you're going to have to deal with it. No, I'm not going to deal with it. You're going to have to actually turn the lights off. Now, I understand. Do you have somewhere you can go stay? Oh, uh, me? Do you have somewhere you can go stay? I'm not leaving my house. I don't have a problem. you the one with the problem. I, I'm not going to leave here, and then you turn it on, and then the And if you come off. over here and knock on my door, you think you see fire in your stove, you're going to see some fire. I can show you some fire. Okay, listen, I'm trying to work with you as calmly as I can, okay? You're not trying to work with me calmly. Okay. The only thing well, you're doing right now is you're trying to tell me what to do and run my household. Okay, if you're not going to work with me, then this is what I'm going to do. Because I already found out where the breaker is. i just go and just turn all the power off. So you don't have your power on at all. Wait a minute, what the f***? No, f you can't turn my f breaker off. Are you f crazy? I got to do what I got to do. I can't start no fire around how here. How you get my phone number anyway? I mean, how you know my name, my number, all that shit? You know what? My shit about to come home, and he going to put the foot up your shit. I don't care if he put your shit in the shit oven, and we set your shit on fire. What the shit you talking about? You going to damn turn the breaker off. Hey, well, let me hold on. I'm trying to sit over here and prevent a fire for the whole complex, and you up in here trying to commit. Uh, 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 this is like arson for you to turn that on. I don't give a you don't want, You already got a problem, so I'm just going to add fuel to the fire. You call me. And again, I want to know how you got my f number. Hey, look, I'm not going to sit here and go on this little small talk I mean, with you. The mystery problem mystery. Is, is that we got a problem with your switch. When you turn it on, my oven comes on you and got all the aisles on the stove you come got on. You got a problem, and it's about to be a bigger problem when my man come over there and put a foot up your I don't know who the f you think you f with, but it's about to be on. You, you don't you call the wrong f I don't know how you got my number, but you called the wrong f today. Okay, fine. I got one more thing else I need to say to you. Is you listening? What the f you got to say, because I'm tired of listening to you. Are you listening? You ain't said I want to here today. You calling me with all this. Here it is. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your husband. Are you? Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> this is who? <laughs> this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your husband. Got me to prank phone call you. Are you serious? Is this for real? <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> Man, I can't believe this. You all right? I know. I was ready to put a foot up in somebody. <laughs> I don't believe I just got pumped like this. <laughs> okay, I got to ask you one more thing. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> what you think, ladies, on International Day? What you think, ladies? We think huh? you're stupid on International huh? Women's Day. All right, nephew, <laughs> coming up next, ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building. Ready for your love questions right after this. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, it is International Women's Day. We will be highlighting ladies that are change makers and leaders in today's society. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve so, Harvey. In order of Ladies Day, all in of honor. my answers I will make sure are geared towards the female advantage. Okay. As you so should. whatever the questions yeah. are, well, Shirley, that Whether ain't it's always International Women's Day or not. Well, you know, sometimes yeah, you have to know. That should be your answer every day. No, every day. No, yeah. no, sometimes you have to know the truth now. And the truth oh. ain't always what you want to hear. Because the truth will set you free. Here we go. Hello. Kelly in Fort Myers. <laughs> Kelly says, I'm having liposuction soon, and my husband gave me the money for it. But he says I don't need it because he loves my pudgy belly. I'm doing it to feel better about myself after having two babies. Do I listen to my husband or do this for myself? Well, I want you to understand something. Your husband gave you the money. Yes. He wants you to do it. Yes. But the smart thing to say is you don't have to do it because I love you like that because he really is loving and honored the fact that you gave him two wonderful children. And he understands that. If you don't do it, it'll be okay with him. But he did give you the money already. And if you don't do it, we want the money back. Yeah, we're yeah. going to need that money. How, how is this Positive geared toward money. International Women's, Women's Day? Day? Please. Okay, I that knew one Tommy was. Tommy wasn't capable. I knew okay. Tommy wasn't capable. Okay, that one wasn't. <laughs> but, I'm, but it's a compliment Out because he will. He did give you the money because he wants you to do it. But he also lets you know that he loves you just the way you are. And that's fine and dandy. But he wants to honor your request and give you the desires of your heart so he gave you the money. He cool with it. He going to praise you when you get it. But it ain't necessary is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fix it with Jesus. But yes. if, you don't, if you don't take this 8500 here we go. How do you know it's 80? want his money back. We need his money back. It's going back in that account. It's going back in that account. Come on, let's go. Zell, Zell, are you back? We're moving on to Hendrix in Grand Rapids. Hendrix says, while my wife and I were on vacation, I wanted to have sex in a hot tub at the hotel. It was late, so we were the only ones out there. Hotel security caught us in the act, and my wife is traumatized. How can I get her to forgive me? Hmm. Oh, I, well, right. that's oh, not going to oh. work, brother. She didn't want to. She did it your way. I don't know how you think. You in public and ain't nobody going to see. Cameras, security, iPhones, oh, camera. and black people out there by themselves. Somebody <laughs> always going to see. No, they're uh, race. <laughs> uh, Chet, uh, swing back around about the pooch. Uh, <laughs> two blacks alone out there. Go see if everything's okay. <laughs> Uh, 10 for they're out here, I believe they're, uh, looks like they're engaged. Uh, they're having an entanglement in the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how can, how can he get her to forgive him? Hey, bro, this is a long walk back. Mm-hmm. Fire She's something. traumatized. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to uh, Jocelyn and Kenner. Jocelyn writes, my husband and I, have um, We had some AC work done in the house, so I went home to meet the technician. It was an old friend from high school, and I was surprised to see him. I gave him a hug, and we chatted a while. My husband saw it on our cameras, and he doesn't believe my story. I'm innocent. Why is he tripping? Because oh, you hugging the technician. <laughs> Why he tripping? Yeah. Because you hugging the technician. Her high and you went friend. home for that. It sounded like, it looked like some type of rendezvous. And, and mm. it just so happens that here come the, the air guy, and he happened to be an old friend, and y'all happened to be hugging. But that uh, could happen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely can happen. But this yeah. is how real men react now. Yeah. So I'm uh, still well, trying he, to, this still is International Women's Day. We're still on it. I mean, well, you now you can't be hugging the, camera, the technician in front of the camera that I don't know that you went home to meet because you say we had AC problems. Now, all of a sudden, you know him, and y'all are hug you, him. Are you so, that insecure, really? I, <laughs> am I that be. insecure? Uh-huh. The hell are you hugging in my house for? 
But why are you watching your wife on the camera? Yeah, I don't get that part. Because <laughs> he's wait bad a minute. secure and controlling. Hold on, wait a minute. If your wife go home by herself to meet mm-hmm. a technician, you supposed to look at her on camera. You okay, got a so strange man. No, no, no. You got a strange man in your house, so you thought. Okay. Now it turns out I know him, and we hugging. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why he on camera. Yeah. Hey, man, let me let me watch this cat over here. Got my wife at the house by yeah, herself. Yeah, I get that part. I do. Yeah, absolutely. Why is he mm-hmm. watching her? Because he supposed to. That's his mm-hmm. job. Okay. But why is he tripping, though? I don't, After a, she I don't have a camera. He, he, insecure. he ain't doing uh, no yeah. AC he work. He is he's secure. Uh, yeah. He ain't doing no AC work. He chanting. That's why he's tripping. <laughs> so, ladies. <laughs> okay, ladies, newlywed. Ladies, ladies, hold yes, on. Yes, Steve. You all got some uh, light fixtures coming to the house. Uh-huh. Your husband has to go home to let the people in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He lets the people in. In walks an old classmate. That's a female. Mm-hmm. They stand in there hugging. Mm-hmm. You see it, and then he tells you, oh, man, she's an old friend from high school. Mm-hmm. And your reaction is, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. my reaction. Exactly. Yeah. I trust my husband. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 What? Yes. A damn <laughs> lie. No, I'm not. We're going to do <laughs> our research, saying, though. Yeah. We are going to do our research. This ain't about <laughs> you trusting your husband. This That's is exactly about, what it's about who this heifer in this house <laughs> hugging my husband in my house. But Steve, I, you call it for real. I will like, ask my husband who is that, and if he tells me who that is, I have no reason to believe that he's lying about yeah. who she is. Cool. Just, what is y'all hugging for? <laughs> because Steve, he just you told seem, you why. <laughs> but you make it seem like they're just standing there just hugging. It's a what church hug, going to do. A church yeah. hug. I have texts at my house all the time. I ain't never hugged now one of them. <laughs> all right, we're moving But on. they didn't go to high school with you. Yeah, from your so, past. So. <laughs> so so right. is your answer. <laughs> Let's get to Mimi in Valley Vista. Mimi says, my husband's female co-worker called him, and when he answered, she said, hey, boo. My husband says it's what she calls everyone. I told him I want to meet her, and he says it's not happening. Now he won't take any calls around me. Why? Oh, <laughs> I love this. Hell no, he ain't today. taking no call. Because he boo. He not going to take no call. Come on now. Hey, boo. Hey, boo, hey, what you doing? Tell you what you do? Hey, this Women's History Month question didn't work out quite right. <laughs> Love like you thought it was going to. Y'all, y'all trick me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, CLO. Happy International Women's Day. Uh, coming up, it will be a tribute to the ladies right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? 
Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The event that initiated International Women's Day happened on March 8th, 1908, when 15,000 women marched through the streets of Manhattan demanding the right to vote and for their rights as working women. The women asked for shorter work hours, better pay, and the right to join a union. There is no mention, however, of the countless enslaved African-American women who labored without pay in New York and across the country. But we celebrate and pay homage to the powerful black women that are making strides in science, technology, engineering, and math. We celebrate our first black female vice president of the United States. We celebrate our first black former first lady, Michelle Obama. We celebrate the first black Female Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, Representative Maxine Waters, and in the Southwest, we celebrate Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. There are countless and countless numbers of black women in the motion picture industry as creatives, producers, and writers, and in radio broadcasting. We salute the black women in this industry as well that paved the way for Carla and I to be able to do what we do daily and what we love to do. So thank you. Happy International Women's Day. I mean, this is a big day. Yeah. Really All the women is. kings out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I think, too, you know, we could talk about this morning. I want to throw this question to the fellas. What woman in your life inspired you the most? You know, we can throw that out there, Steve. Mm-hmm. I think my we mama. I think we all know we your mom. You, you, yeah, yeah mama. Mm-hmm. your mama. Mm-hmm. It lost Vera Harvey taught me faith. Mm-hmm. 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 She just wanted me to be understand the power of prayer and and the what how important faith the role of faith could play in your life. She said, Boy, you may not see it now, but you gonna need it. Yeah. And the more you understand that, the more comfortable your life gonna be. And she's telling to me all the time, even as a kid, I don't I, there has never been a lesson that has mm-hmm. had a played a bigger role in my life than my mother's role of teaching me faith and prayer. And just the story of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I just, just the whole Hallelujah. story. I, you know, I ain't memorize everything. I didn't do everything right. I sure ain't. But boy, I'm going to tell you something. That was the most valuable. That, I've learned nothing more valuable than that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It, that, that's so interesting because my story is similar as far as the lesson my mom taught me. Of course, you know, us both being female, she taught me so many lessons. But the one lesson that sticks with me forever and ever is when she asked me, where is your faith? Because I was mm-hmm. going through, some, I think I was having Sheridan at the time and I was scared and I was just freaked mm-hmm. out and everything. And she looked at me and she said, where is your faith? And that's the moment that I realized that you have to exercise faith. You just can't talk about it. You got to actually do it. When challenges come along, you have to be in faith. You do. And when you're in faith, it, it can work out for you, of course. It always works out for you. But that was a lesson she taught me as well. Where is your faith? I'll never forget those words. I've taught it to my daughter and mm-hmm. my granddaughter. And where is your faith? You got to have that. You got to have yeah. that. You got to have my it. My mama beat Jesus into me. I mean, just <laughs> beat it into me. Okay. So I, gonna get I, I have it. Yeah. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm, that's I'm uplifting my mama on International yeah, yeah. Women's Day. Women's my mama Day. beat beat Jesus yeah. into me. Ooh, she gonna get yeah. you for I, that. I know yeah. him for myself now. Yeah. I have had him beat yeah. into me. Yeah. Yeah. Only I thing know. I was, only thing I was missing was them thorns on my head. Other than that, <laughs> I felt very Gosh. much. Close to the story. Yeah. But, close. But, but as you got older, your mom forgot all the beatings. They forgot oh, they, 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 act like they it conveniently never happened. forgot uh-huh. it, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. As soon as they get grandchildren, they forget. They don't even yeah. do the same stuff no more. No. I didn't yeah. do that. I didn't whoop you. Mom. What? Beat what? the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the Lord. She told me, but thank she told you, me one day, I appreciate don't, it. Don't, don't, yes. don't whoop Jordan. Don't whoop Jordan. He he, he, he all right. He he made a mistake. Don't whoop him. What? He made a <laughs> mistake? <laughs> Who you are you, lady? <laughs> right. You? Have we met? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> 
And I think oh. for us in, 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 in the black community, for us, it's our mother, our oh, grandmothers, mother. all of these women in our lives that helped shape us to who we are my today. Aunts. You yeah. know, oh, your, your aunts. sisters, oh, your aunties, yeah. all of that. Oh. So, you know, we see women today. We hear women today. Mm-hmm. We're, we're empowered by women. You know, I, I think for me, Shirley, the challenge is I'm always um, trying to balance having it all. Yeah. And and yeah, I think career, that's a lot of husband. pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure motherhood. that women mm-hmm. put on yeah. themselves they do. of husband, career, uh, mm-hmm. motherhood. And, mm-hmm. and you got to set boundaries and set time for yourself. For yourself. And, yeah. yeah. You absolutely yeah. do. You there is nothing do. like mama. Nothing. Nothing Mm-mm. like that. It, it's just, no. There's no. nothing like mother, especially growing up, man. There's just nothing, nothing that competes against mama, man. No. Nope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just... I, I watched my mama make some sacrifices, man. Yes, I'm talking sir. about getting her nursing degree at 27, going to school in the daytime, going to work at night. I mean, for four years. And I'm here I am, 10 years old. Got to take my sister to school just so my mama can finish. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the sacrifices she made, man, it's just unbelievable. And that's yeah. what makes her my hero, man. I, I've watched yeah. her. And that's especially it. single moms. I've watched you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yes. Single that's mothers. it. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Balancing yeah. all women doing it all. All. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And we celebrate you on this International Women's Day. We absolutely do. And thank you for yeah. all you've done. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour and continuing to celebrate women for International Women's Day, Carla is going mm. to highlight female legends in music. This is going to be good. <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. As we've been mentioning all morning, it is International Women's Day, and we continue to salute women by highlighting our legendary female artist, Carla. Let's go. What you got for us, girl? Okay, so in this segment, you all, we're going to celebrate women who make music and culture. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I see her, hear her. Mm -hmm. Uh, These lists of women artists, you have a connection between beauty, confidence, empowerment. So you ready for my list? I'm I'm ready. All right, number one on my list. I I shouldn't number them because, you know, we already fell out about the uh, Rolling Stones. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 200 (laughs) list of singers so i'm just gonna throw them out there the queen of soul (laughs) right right the queen of soul aretha franklin on my list Mm -hmm. beyonce Mm -hmm. whitney houston Mm -hmm. shade Mm -hmm. anita baker this is not in a certain order Uh uh-uh jill (laughs) scott gladys knight yeah come on stephanie mills don't play with them tony braxton you better be okay. Yes. yes. Mariah Carey. Mm-hmm. Focus. Yep. Erica Badu. Yes. Walk naked. Yes. Patty LaBelle. I mean. Yes. I'm sorry. Shaka Not, Khan. And, no, and let me better. say this about Shaka Khan. The other day she did apologize <laughs> for shading. <laughs> The other singers like Mary, Adele, and Mariah. She also said that music is not a competition. I love me some Shaka Khan. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. Shaka Khan, also on mm. my list, Tina Turner. Ooh. Tina Turner. Ooh. Don't yes. don't leave yes. nobody. Come on. Diana Ross. <laughs> oh. mm. the, the, the diva. The ultimate. The ultimate. The diva boss. of all divas. Yes. Alicia <laughs> playing the piano. Keys. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, you better know that. Mary J. Blige. Mary. <laughs> Hip-hop, Jennifer please. Hudson. J. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. What yes. Hudson say. singing mm-hmm. behind? Girl. Mm-hmm. Brandy. Because I'm going to take mm-hmm. it to the 90s now. Mm-hmm. Brandy. Okay, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. okay, uh-huh. I'm waiting on somebody that ain't came. New artist. Her. Mm-hmm. This oh, woman right mm-hmm. here part, is a bad yeah. girl. Yes, Before yes. you go to new artists, let me add one. Come on. Add to Fantasia. Oh, Thank I got you. Fantasia. I got oh, Fantasia. you got it? She ain't new oh, artist. Fantasia. You new. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I got go Fantasia ahead. Fantasia on, on that list. Come. Oh, but that girl, her cold, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she cold. Yeah. She yeah. is cold. She cold. I just got hip to her. Yeah, <laughs> you just <laughs> got hip to her. You got hip to yeah. her. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I just got hip to her. Phyllis Hyman. Oh, yeah. Girl. That's a good one. Girl. She could sing. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. 
Phyllis Hyman. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. me some Phyllis. Who you want to add, Steve? You look like you want to Angela Bofield. Bofield. Uh -huh. <laughs> she got that voice we like gotta that. Add sound like she's a rainbow. Uh, yes. <laughs> International Women's Day. Thank you, Carla. That was great. All right, coming up uh, at yes. 34 minutes after the hour. That's right. Halo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sister Odell is here on International Women's Day. We'll oh, talk gosh. to her right after uh -oh. this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Sister Odell is here, ladies and gentlemen. Of course she is. It is hey, International Lord. Women's Day. Why wouldn't she? My be? Lord, hey, you know what? We ain't got no time to waste. Keep the music going. I'm just here, right? I ain't got time to say this is International Women's Day, and mm -hmm. I came on to uplift and give honor and glory to women's. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. And call it beautiful list you put together, sweetie. It's good to do that, you know, and everything. But I want to come Thank here. You. I know why you uh -huh. bought me in, and I ain't going to let you down. What I'm you here got? for the gospel singers. Come on, oh, sister. Oh, okay. You did the secular ones, and I love them all, you know, because I, <laughs> you know, I listen to me some, you know, secular music. You know? Oh, oh you do? Sister I didn't Odell? know that, Sister okay. Odell. You listen to R&B? Oh, girl, girl. Oh, me, okay. and, me, and, me and Ella Fish Gerald went to school. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the list too. Come on, sister. Yes, she is. Ella, Ella used to sing in the church choir with me. The little choir called the Joylander. We was kids, but she mm. said there wasn't no money in that. She was right though. She right. <laughs> she went on out there and got famous. <laughs> went out there. I knew Billy Holiday. You yes, know I all am. of them. What? Sarah but Moore. I wanted to just let's just go down the list of black women that yes, sang the church music. Oh, yes, oh, ma'am. Wow. Lord, have church. mercy. Let's start with the greatest one, probably of them all, Mahalia Jackson. Yes, Whoa. Lord. Mm -hmm. oh, Lord, man. Lord, Lord. Yolanda singing at him. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> Lord. Man, open my heart. <laughs> I had to stop Steve a couple times. He looked upside her head at the BET celebration of gospel. I said, you ain't got enough God in you. You need to go on. She's a beautiful lady, though. She's gorgeous. She, yes, she tall, is. Tall, tall, tall. What is that cool. girl that can sing? Kim Burrell. Oh, yeah. Kim yes. Burrell can sing. Mm -hmm. And he what's the girl sing. that's married to the little fat boy? Uh, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Pamela oh. Mann. Pamela. Pamela. I'm going Take me to, the to king. see the king. <laughs> you better sing Odell Lord, today. have mercy, Jesus. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Lord, let me get on down. Come on now. Now we got a bad color. Shirley Caesar. Hi, <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, Pastor God. Shirley Caesar. That's Take right. Us to church. Amen. I Amen. knew her grandmama. Oh, really? What was no. her name? Who was that? Dressing. Her last name was Dressing. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar, Caesar, Caesar dressing. Let that marinate, sister. Sink it on in. Yes, Lord. Dressing. Everyone's. I knew everyone's. Uh, then uh, I, there was another singer y'all didn't know. Oh. Alberta Clementine. She was married to the lead singer of the Mighty Clouds of Joy. What? Mm. Okay. Yeah. She oh, had a, a women's church group called mm. Thunderstorm. Oh. Mm. Mm. Mighty Clouds of Joy, the Thunderstorm. Yeah, the women's okay. church group. They was the Thunderstorm. When they came in there, they brung it. So they yes, called themselves the Thunderstorm. Mm. They brung it. Too. And it was just a lot of them, you know. It's a lot of good ones that sing it now, Mary. you know. Mm -hmm. Mary, Mary, Mary. Mary. Yep, Leandro. Yeah. Yeah. girls is good. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What is the one? Um, CC. C.C. Whining. Yes, uh, she can sing. Uh, from yes. the Whining's family. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Who else huh. you got on your list? Boy, well, it, it ain't, to... you know, it, the ones uh -huh. that's really singing, y'all ain't going to know. Bernadette Peterson. Uh -huh. mm. Bernadette <laughs> Peterson. Who is that? Girl, that girl could sing. She sang at only revival. She traveled the country and did revival. Dottie People. Oh, yes. oh, on time oh, God. Oh, yes. Dottie. On time God. And yes. what is my that lady that passed recently was on Steve's show? Uh, oh, uh, saying, uh, oh, what is yeah. her name? Uh, um, Pace? Yeah, the Pace. One of the Lord Pace sisters. Jesus. Yes. Uh huh. Oh, Don't ain't no sisters, sisters like the Clark sisters. Clark sisters, now. that's right. Come on. Every last uh -huh. one of them helpers mm -hmm. can sing. Mm -hmm. You 
You bought the sunshine. I'm talking about blows up. They ain't married, but you bought the sunshine. There's a bomb in Gilead and everything. That's right. <laughs> There's a bomb in Gilead. That's right. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. See, it's so many people. I didn't have time to name all of them. See? Happy Mother's uh, Mother's Women's Week. Uh, we coming up credit next. The women's Is this your miss? <laughs> Frank phone call from the nephew sister, Odell, right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, is this my house or hers? Okay, we'll mm. get into that. Find mm. out what that's all about coming up. But right now, it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Nephew, nephew, nephew. It is International Women's Day. What you got It is. Us? And I, uh, there's, there's, mm. I just cannot let you down. On International oh, Women's Day, okay. I cannot oh, do good. that, Carla. Oh, right? Okay, this okay. is good news. Because uh-huh. we have to, we have to show love and affection for these beautiful ladies oh, in the thank world. You, we nephew. have to. So, so the prank today <laughs> is, I love your wife more than you do. I be what? <laughs> what? I told Negro, you. what? Sat up here <laughs> I told and you. Told you I told today you. Today was need International to be concerned. Women's Day. Mm-hmm. I love your wife more than you do. Sometimes no, 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 you got to say it. Look at me. I saw Steve. it coming. I saw today? it coming. Today? You're going to let him do this today? This what, what, what day have you been able to stop? <laughs> <laughs> he did it on Father's Day, Mother's Day. Sunday, <laughs> Easter, <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> Jesus' I love your birthday, wife. Jesus' <laughs> resurrection, Palm <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, what day you going to stop? Ramadan. He just a fool through all major <laughs> holidays. A Kwanzaa, he don't <laughs> act right. Happy Hanukkah, all the days of Hanukkah. Well, we had a What's meeting about this. He a candle this? all by his side. It don't matter. What's the name of it again, Tommy? What? I love your wife more than you do. How is this? Lord, Why did you pick what? that for today, Tommy? I do, yeah. That's, that's appropriate for today, isn't it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> you don't see how this fit? This ignorant show. This don't <laughs> fit to y'all? I don't understand. I, I yeah. All right. You know what? I, I you know what? I, I, I try to do something nice for y'all and, and, and reach in <laughs> oh, my. Oh, now we don't appreciate you. Is that what you're about to tell us? Reach in my archives and get y'all something nice that's gonna fit your little day. And now this how y'all <laughs> act at, with. It. Look oh, he put Lil on the front too. Oh, he offended. I can't stand him. Can <laughs> play it. Uh, uh-huh. All right, cat dog. Let's go. I love your wife more than you do. Come on, man. Hello. Hey, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to reach Trey. This Trey, who is this? Hey Trey, how you doing, man? This is Milton. I work with your wife, Teresa. Milton? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you probably heard of me before. I've been, uh, I've been at the job probably about five years now. So has she ever mentioned me? Milton? No, I ain't heard no Milton. What's going on? Is everything cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is good. Everything is good. Hey, listen. Um, I wanted to uh, have a conversation with you, man. Uh, I, I, I don't really know how to spring this on you or whatever, but. Um, like I say, I've been working at the, at the spot for five years and been on Teresa probably like around three. And um, I, I guess what I really want to say is that I, I didn't, I didn't gain some feelings for Teresa. And you know, oh, to be whoa, honest, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, man, hold on, hold on. You calling me and you're telling me right now you have feelings for my wife, who you work with, and you right. name her Teresa because that is my wife. You have feelings for my wife. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, it, it took me a while to, to come forward and say this, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm man enough now that I, I feel like me and you need to talk about it. Bro, have you lost your mind? No, no, I haven't. I have haven't. you lost I, your I, mind? Today, no, listen, I'm just letting you know, today is the day that I decided I'm not carrying this weight on my shoulders no more. I'm getting it off of me, all right? And at the end of the day, I love your wife more than you do. What? I, what are you saying? I love your wife more than you do. Bro, so you, how long you been loving my wife? You tell me how long you been loving my wife. How long, how long you feel that you have been in love with my wife? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at, I know, I know, I know at least two. And how long, like, does my wife years. even know this? Does my wife even know this? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's aware of it to a certain extent. To a certain extent? What, what, how, how certain of the extent are we talking? I mean, you know, when we go to lunch together, she, you know, I mean, I'm sure she knows. Y'all be, y'all be going to lunch together? How long y'all been going to lunch together, bro? We've been going to lunch together at least at least two and a half years. 
I mean, we go to lunch together almost every day. I mean, we might miss a day if she go with the girls and I go with the fellas. So be it. But for the most part, me and her, me and her pretty much at lunch together. Yeah, I need a, I swear, I, bro, stay the, stay the hell away from my wife, bro. I need you to back the f- nah, Ain't no more lunches. Nah. Ain't no more, no, 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 bro, because you, you, you done talked enough. You done talked enough. Ain't no more in love. Ain't no more safe. You need to stay the f- back, period. Stay the f- back, man. I don't want to hear none of that f- Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Because as soon as she come on, we don't Hey, bro, listen, listen. All, I know all about you, Trey. Everything about you. All right? I already know how you treat her. All bro, right. I'm hot. Bro. I'm feeling like a strong sensation right now because I really want to reach through the phone and just break your f-ing neck right now. That's what I, I really want to do. I do. I, That's what I, I really want to do. And why is my wife talking about business outside of our household? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Hey. All I'm saying is when we go to lunch, she let me know how she's feeling. She let me know what she's going through. Hey, she let me know all of it. Stop, stop with that lunch, bro. I don't want to hear another damn thing about lunch, bro. Ain't no more lunches from here on out, bro. You call me talking about you in love with my wife. You've been taking... You know, what the f***? Who the f*** is a Milton? I'm Milton. Where you at, bro? Where you at? I'm Milton. You, the, I'm Milton. you, you there now? Yes, they do. Hey, hey, man, hey, man, listen. Calm, calm down with all that energy you got going on. Like, hey, you're going to do calm something. Down. You ain't, don't tell me to you calm down. You're not going to do nothing. Don't tell me to calm down, bro. Wait, you say I'm not going to what? what? You're, not, you're not going to do nothing. Tell me where you're you at right now, bro. I'm getting my keys right now. Tell me where you're at right, right now, bro. Right so now, now you, bro. You, so so how about how about when you got laid off and you was off for six months and she was carrying all the weight and paying all the bills? You ain't jump ass in. All right, bet. So, since you know, since you know everything, I bet you know I got a too. So uh, all you need to know is, all you need to know is, bro, you're done, bro. You're done, bro. Okay. You're done, bro. Okay. It's it, bro. Okay. That's and it, you bro. You know what? Why we? Why we? Why we? The phone talking about that he with my and wife saying that he in love and shit, talking about lunch and shit. What the fuck up? Why we here? You can thank me for the for the for the suit that you got for Christmas. You can thank me for that. I picked it okay. out and I paid for it. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Word? okay. Cool. 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 All right. Cool. Well, let me go in the closet right now. Right now. All right. You talking about the great suit, the three piece? That's what you talking about? This got <laughs> great bull right here with this bull. This keep the anyway. I ain't like this. No well, now, now you don't like the suit. You don't want the suit three times. Now you don't like it. Sweet. You ain't <laughs> told me at lunch when you don't want the suit, dude. I swear to God, bro. I swear to God. I need to talk to my wife, man. I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my wife because I... Hey, man, listen. You know what? I just couldn't hold this back no more. Me living behind in the shadows. and But I'm over here kicking money out to Teresa when she needed it. Why you was laid off? I'm helping her out. I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing too much on my. But you been... So you was giving her money? You kicking her money when I was laid off? You kicking her money? Dude, somebody had to step up, man. And me and Teresa's tight, so you know, I just tried to step in and help her out. So you giving my wife money? Is what you saying to me? Do you want me to make you feel better about the whole thing? You want me to make you feel better? I... You ain't need to make me feel better about shit, man. I really feel, talk, I'm feel good. All I need to do is talk to my wife. That's okay, all, I, I, gonna... all I got to do is talk to my wife, bro. Okay. That's that's fine. But can I say something that'll make you feel better? What? I'm going to say this to you, Trey. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife, Teresa, got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Hey, this is Tommy, man. This is Nephew Tom, Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife On the Teresa. Steve Harvey Show. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. You got me opening the safe, getting it awesome, bruh. Like... <laughs> bruh. Bruh, don't do that, bruh. You got to stop that, Tommy. Come on now. Come on. You got to stop. My heart is racing. I'm sweating. Oh. Come on now. But hey, I gotta ask you this. You gotta tell me what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. It's the Steve Harvey Morty show. Gotta be. <laughs> Happy International Women's Day! <laughs> yep. You keep You're your little so shout stupid. out at the end what? to us. You keep <laughs> yeah. that. Ah. 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 Oh, no. Woo! I can't believe he tense. picked this. Prank. It got uh-huh. tense, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. All right. Uh, 
Listen, coming up next, it's the strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, is this my house or hers? We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is... He's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Time for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM. All you have to do is click on Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. You never know. It could be yours. It Mm -hmm. could be yours on International Women's Day. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. (laughs) Strawberry letter. Crazy. Subject, thank you, nephew. Is this my house or hers? Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband and I are 29 years old, and we got married a year ago. Our anniversary is coming up, so his parents gifted us with a house. My husband and I thought they were giving us a down payment, but without telling us, they went and picked out our house and bought it. My husband and I were working with a realtor and looking for a ranch style house with a big backyard. Our home search came to a screeching halt when his parents popped up at our house with balloons, champagne, and an iPad. They came to show us a new house on the iPad and we liked the house, but it wasn't our style. It's a two-story home with the primary suite on the main floor and all of the other bedrooms are upstairs. We want to have a family and that's not ideal for our babies. We were not pleased but we both had to act grateful. His mother took all the credit for picking out my house so I pretended to be excited but my husband was squeezing my hand under the table because he knew I was about to explode. The I, uh, the, the deal is done and our mortgage is less than $1,000 a month so we got past the initial irritation we were feeling but now we have another dilemma with his mama. She's hired her old white friend as our interior designer, and they're planning to paint my kitchen a bright yellow because it's a cheerful color. Um, I called my husband immediately and told him he'd better come and get his mama. He said to let his mother waste her money and we can change the paint color later. All I kept asking him was, is this her house or mine? And he kept telling me to calm down. It'll be all right. Well, it's not all right. Should I let him and his mama have this house? Are you crazy? (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) are you crazy right now? I know. I I, I mean... (laughs) 
you don't want the, you know, I mean, somebody's going to be feeling some kind of way. I get that. Especially if you say something, do not say anything. You don't want his very generous mom and dad to, to, to be feeling any kind of way. You and your husband are missing the bigger picture here. Mostly you. I mean, this is for the most part a free house. What do you have? A thousand dollars a month mortgage? Come on now. Uh, this is a blessing. W what about a blessing don't you get? Don't you understand? You guys sound so ungrateful. And, and it's mostly you. Mostly you. Um, ha have you been watching the housing market lately? Uh, do you know how much houses cost? Are you aware how hard it is to get a house? Do you, have you seen the interest rates? Junior, you just bought a house. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... Here it is. You guys get a house. You have to pay a thousand dollars a month mortgage. They they practically gave it to you, and you're complaining. Uh, now, should your mother-in-law be trying to decorate the house too? No, uh, she needs to stay out of that part of it, except come by for dinner and stuff when you invite her. Uh, but I I don't think you really understand what's happening here. You you basically have a mortgage-free home. You just have to pay a thousand dollars. They bought a house for you. Come on. Uh, I, I wouldn't say anything to them, but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't be ungrateful. They didn't have to do this for you. The house may not be exactly what you want right now, but you can live there for a few years, save your money, sell it, whatever, and, and get something that fits your family more. That's what smart and thankful people do. Don't be stupid here. Don't be stupid. Uh, you better hope they don't hear this letter. That's all I got to say. Don't do <laughs> Steve? Well, they're going to hear the letter. And yeah, it's they are. Okay. Here's the deal. This is, you're 29 years old. You don't even know yet. You, you have no idea what these people have actually done. You, you, you have no idea what they saved you. You're on the market looking for a house. You got to have a down payment. They give you the house that you would have had to put a down payment on. And now the down payment, as hard as it is to save lump sums of money, you now get to keep your lump sum of money. Now you mad because she done got the old white lady paint your kitchen yellow. I have so many damn yellow dishes sitting up in there. It wouldn't be funny. I had yellow tablecloth. It'd be the sunniest, brightest, happiest free room you've ever seen in your life. I think at 29, you're not looking at what this actually is. You're staring a gift horse dead in the mouth. You have been given, number one, you have an instant asset. And the money you were saving looking on Zillow for a house, you now get to keep. See, you you mad about all the wrong things, little girl. Damn, I got y'all wanted the joy of buying a house. Somebody gave you a house. It's so much you can do. The equity that's in a house that's already purchased the equity that's in the house, the asset that you have, you have no idea what that's done for you. And yet and still, you mad because they removed the joy of you looking for a house. You wanted a ranch-style house. They got you a two-story house. It ain't good for babies. You ain't even had no baby. You, you ain't even had, you know what I mean, baby? You know what I mean? Family's been raised with steps. It's not <laughs> ideal for babies. <laughs> when right. they gonna learn how to go them down steps? <laughs> I, it's just you just not looking at this the right way. When I come back, I, we just gonna talk about real estate. I don't I don't have nothing in this letter for you that surely didn't cover. You, what is wrong with you? Yeah. You are looking at all of the negative and have not taken one look at the positive in this. And you, therefore, are All missing. right, Steve. Hang on. We'll come back with part two of your response at 23 minutes after. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, is this my house or hers? We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter, is this my house or hers? Well, the question, Ooh. let me answer that question. It's your house. Yeah. She gave it to y'all. It's in y'all's name. She's just trying to be helpful man she thinks she's doing you a favor paying for a decorator painting it for you fixing the house up you know you got money you could change all that look your husband he rock rocking a hard place his mom and his daddy done done this for y'all and now his wife don't like it he trying to just get you to it's gonna be all right and it is gonna be all right but you you but you act like a 
I, I, you know, you're acting like a spoiled brat here. You're just acting like a brat. So let me explain something to you. Y'all, ain't but 29. Your anniversary coming up. The parents gifted us with a house. We can stop the letter right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The praise dance, the parade I'm throwing for these people. I'm taking them to dinner. They get a day, International Women's Day. It'll be International Mom and Daddy Day. <laughs> right. <laughs> My husband and I thought they were giving us a down payment. Wait a minute. Hold up. So you ain't even had a down payment. I ain't even see that. Y'all mm-hmm. thought they was giving you a down payment, but instead of down payment, they gave y'all a house. They picked out the house and bought it. Y'all was working with a real, to looking for a ranch-style house with a big backyard. Then it all came to a halt when they popped up at popped up at the house with balloons, champagne, and iPad. They came to show y'all a new house on the iPad. We liked the house, but it wasn't our style. My first house wasn't my style, Lee. Yeah. My first apartment wasn't my style. My first car wasn't my style. You got to start somewhere. It was a two-story, we want to have a family, and that's not ideal for our babies. What babies? You ain't got no babies. <laughs> we were not pleased, but we both had to act grateful. Act grateful. Act grateful. <laughs> These young people today, man. I, 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 this is the worst. And, 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 and this is not all young people, so let me just correct that. Because I know some young people right now, you walk up and get in the house, you, you finna see a whole bunch of gratitude. Mm-hmm. We are not pleased, but we had, his mother took all the credit for picking out my house, so I pretended to be excited. My husband was squeezing your hand under the table because he knew I was about to explode. The deal is done. Our mortgage is less than $1,000 a month. What? What, 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 what kind of house is it? What? What? Are you, what? They done put enough money down where your mortgage yes. is less than $1,000 a month. Girl. So we got past the initial irritation we were feeling, but now we have another dilemma. She done hired an old white friend, and they plan on painting my kitchen bright yellow because it's a cheerful color. You can go in there and say, hey, I can't paint it yellow. I Really, yellow doesn't do it for me. What other choices do we have? You know, you could do that. I called my husband told him he better come get his mama. Come get his mama for what? Mm-hmm. See, now you're making the man have to choose. You finna make your mama feel bad for doing y'all a favor. You was first looking for the down payment. These people turned around and gave you a house. He said, let his money, mama waste her money and we can change the paint color lately. All I kept asking was this, her house or mine? And he kept telling me to calm down. It'll be all right. Well, should I let him and his mama have this house? Are you for real? So now, this marriage that's only been a year, you ready to walk away from him, the house, and the mama? Look, girl, what's wrong with you? If this all it takes to break up your marriage, you probably shouldn't have got married because I got news for you. It's way more coming than this here. Mm-hmm. They done gave us a free house in here, paint now, kitchen, yellow, and didn't give us no down payment. They gonna buy the damn house and then sit up here. Now this old white lady in here finna paint my kitchen for free. And I'm sitting up in here. She done picked it out bragging, talking about she done mm-hmm. picked out my house. Gonna bring some damn balloons and some champagne over here on an iPad. And now all we done had to call these realtors and tell them, (laughs) don't call us no more because we messed around and got this damn free house. And she's sitting up in here taking all the credit for it. I don't want no damn free house. Want no mortgage for no under no thousand (laughs) dollars. What? That's what it sounds like. You're right. (laughs) That's all it sounds like. And it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Young lady, get a grip on yourself. Here's what you can do as Shirley said it. Move in the house. When you get pregnant, sell the house and go get what you want. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When you sell the house, it will give you the money to put the down payment on whatever house you want of a house. And you didn't have a down payment or a house before. Or, hallelujah, keep the house, save your money, get a down payment, and now you have rental property. I don't understand how you're not looking at this girl. You, you, I've never. That's crazy. I wish somebody to this day would give me a house. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Jackpot. Junior don't, just bought a house. Don't, don't just give me a house. Yeah. You can give me a house that needs fixing up. 
I know? take that, fix it up, and flip yeah. it. I yeah. wish somebody would give me a house. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody yes. never gave me no damn house. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. are one spoiled, non-visionary person. Mm-hmm. But the, the most disturbing part in this whole letter is, should I let him and his mama have his house? Yeah. Go buy me a house and make me pay under $1,000 a month. Something I ain't want. Then going to pay my kitchen yellow. I got to give me some paperwork. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow, lady. All right. Please leave your comments on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, on this Women's International uh, International Women's Day, we might as well celebrate some women in sports because okay. they have made some contributions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. off the top, you can think about no other than the Venus and Serena Williams. I mean, they've made... Goats. They've yes. changed the entire landscape of uh, of tennis for mm-hmm. uh, women, and I'm just want to give them their their props. Also, Simone Biles. Let's just mm-hmm. go yeah. ahead mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. say yeah. best gymnast I've ever seen. Don't I don't I don't, I don't know don't. I don't know one better than that one. I've I've never. She got her own. She got her own flip. What that What that take? That's how cold <laughs> she is. Gabby <laughs> you know, Douglas. Gabby, Gabby Douglas opened that door. Mm-hmm. Yes. Gabby Douglas, mm-hmm. yes, yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Yes, Gabby sir. Douglas, that's another yes, one. Sir. That's true. Mm-hmm. Here, here's another one in, in tennis. Naomi Osaka. Yes, I, yes. I, yes, yes, yes. Bringing yes. attention to issues. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. just being an activist and a tennis player. I mean, that that's another. One. Here's one we have to give a shout out to. She's okay. been through a lot, and I'm telling you. This is this is one we want to celebrate. Brittany Griner. I'm telling you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything mm-hmm. that oh, yeah. she's been through. Mm-hmm. Her strength. Mm-hmm. Her strength. Yes. Bravery. Yes. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And and uh-huh. and then I have to look at this. Yeah. Don Staley. She is Dumb. the head coach of South oh. Carolina. You know, yes. South Carolina. Yes. Oh. yes. The yes. highest yes. paid coach in women's NCAA basketball right That's now. Right. That's I'm right. Just, Junior. I just yeah. waiting on y'all. They said, Don Staley. Wait a minute. Yes. Don. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 I follow her. Yes. yes. She's yes. a bad girl. That's a no, bad don't, not sister play. right there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Another Absolutely. woman I want to give a shout out to, Who? Candace Parker. Girl, I, yes. tell, I tell you, I love Candace Parker, WNBA the player. NBA. Yes. <laughs> Candace Parker, first woman to dunk in an NCAA tournament. That's what Who? Candace did. Was she? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, dog, we can go to the track. Wait, wait, wait. Do. Stay on Please, stay on. You, stay uh, on uh, anybody heard of uh, Jackie Joyner Curse? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. heard of Flo Jo? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Anybody oh, yeah. heard of this girl named Allison Felix? Allison Felix. Hurdle, come on now. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, I live here. You, yes, I, yes. I'm just dude. telling you, women have made dominant contributions in the sports world. Althea Junior. Gibson, um, yes, sir, open the door yes. for all of them. Mm-hmm. Lisa Leslie, we can't Lisa leave her out. Leslie. Yes, on International Women's Day, we just wanted to highlight all these women who've made all these great contributions. Joanne to Patterson. Okay. Who was that, Who used to come up to the bus barn and play tackle with the boys, <laughs> and all of us were scared of her. <laughs> Shout out to Joanne. Uh-huh. Shout out to Joanne. Joanne was knocking first, boys out. First one to make the boys say, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Little no facts. All right, Junior, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, at the top of the hour, black females across the world are still reeling from Trevor Noah's powerful emotional tribute Ooh, yes. to black women. Remember when he did that back in December? Yes. Well, we'll mm-hmm. let you hear it again. It bears repeating right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. 
go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. No celebrity has publicly acknowledged and thanked black women quite like the former Daily Show host Trevor Noah did in his final emotional monologue. Trevor's last show was back in December, you recall, but his words still resonate today. Take a listen. Special shout out to to black women. You know, I've, I've been... I've often been credited with, you know, having these grand ideas of people like, oh, Trevor, you're so smart and you're so... And then I'm like, I'm like, who do you think teaches me, you know? Who do you think has shaped me, nourished me, informed me, you know? From my mom, my grand, you know, my aunt, all these black women in my life. But then in America as well, if you... I always tell people, if you truly want to learn about America, talk to black women. Because unlike everybody else, black women cannot afford to f*** around and find out. Black people understand how hard it is when things go bad, especially in America, but any place where black people exist, whether it's Brazil, whether it's South Africa, wherever it is, when things go bad, black people know that it gets worse for them. But black women in particular, they know what is, genuinely. People always be shocked. They'll be like, why do black women turn out the way they do in America? Why do they vote the way they... Yeah, because they know what happens if things do not go the way it should. They cannot afford to around and find out. Mm. Yes, mm. sir. Mm. Mm. Yes, well sir. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes. I love, love that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor <laughs> Noah, for that. So, Trevor yeah. Noah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. That kind of put it all into perspective, you know? And Steve, you're a champion for black women. Always have been. I mean, I you don't know. you know, um for me. I don't know anybody. I, there's not a single group that is responsible and has been called on to do more mm-hmm. in 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 this in not not in this country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not in this country, because black women have felt the brunt of all of these policies, whether it was the Willie Lynch letter, whether it was the three-fifths of a human being, whether it was women can't vote, whether it's blacks can't vote, whether it's been voter suppression, whether this has been the, the drug laws that created the mass incarceration of black men. Women, black women have suffered the brunt of what this country does more so than anybody, they've been on the receiving end. Now, black men, we all understand what this is, but we're talking about the women who have had to cope with this because they are oftentimes left holding the bag. Mm -hmm. And they are responsible for building up Mm -hmm. the backbone, the courage, and the fortitude of their men. And they've had to do it when none when 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 wasn't nobody lifting them up. Mm-hmm. And when they take their men from the welfare policy, you can't get welfare if there's a man in the house 
So when a man does come around, if the social worker finds that's out, you lose your benefits. So they don't even do nothing to promote a family. Mm -hmm. You have to be on your own to receive this. And you think that's some great way of helping single women. No, it's a great way to keep the destruction of the family in place, which you know is far more important than any financial support. But they know that. But that policy, who ends up suffering for that? Black women. Women of color. They've always done that, man. And that's the thing about it, man, that makes them such a special breed. Because they are just, man, them women, man, they next level strong. They next level strong. Period. That's all I can say. Well, thank well, you. Thank you for that, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show on this National International Women's Day right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The movie The Woman King has been given official permission to release in cinemas in mainland China. It is expected to debut on April 14th. The Woman King was directed by a black woman, Gina Prince Bythewood, and stars Viola Davis and a predominantly black female cast. The movie has grossed $97 million worldwide, wow. with $29 million coming from international markets and $67.3 million in North America. So we have to say, on this International Women's Day. Congratulations going out to Gina Prince Bythewood and the incomparable Viola Davis. That was yes. absolutely my favorite movie of last year, The Woman King. If you have not seen it, please see it. I, I was upset that she was not nominated, Viola Davis, for the movie. I thought she would be, but it is you've got to go that's, see it if you haven't okay. seen it. She got she got everyone in the trophies. She got all of them. You good. <laughs> Did you hear yes. your uncle? You got a bunch of them. Yeah. You don't want me to say nothing. Yeah, you <laughs> shut up. Yeah. I like how and you play like he don't know why. Yeah, right, right. But uh -huh. speaking of nominations, the Oscars this Sunday. Let me tell you something. If Angela Bassett does not get an Academy Award, I'm going to walk down there. <laughs> what movie? What movie? Wakanda. Wakanda. Forever. Black Panther. Yeah. Wakanda. Mm -hmm. Wakanda forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is her mm -hmm. time to get this Academy Award. Well, yeah. You better get to walking. God dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll have more. <laughs> You can head on down there now. Show, there. show started on. 8 Sunday. Show started 8 Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to play a round of Would You Rather. We want to get started right now. It's International Women's Day. Let's get to it. Okay, so now, it's, since it's International Women's Day, I will be asking the ladies the question. Oh, so, oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going right. gonna to flip the script a little bit okay. up in here, okay? Yeah. All right, here we go. Rather. Would you rather? Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> would you rather uh -huh. skip the hair salon for three months or skip the nail salon? Oh, oh. definitely the nail the salon. The nail salon. Yeah. Got to yeah. have the hair together. Ain't yeah. nobody not getting uh, their hair done for uh, three months. Uh, <laughs> not, no, no, sir. No, no sir. sir. We're going to have to put y'all hands and feet in something, though, if you're going to no, do no. that. We, we can get some nail polish. Yeah. <laughs> right. We can, Thank you for nails. No, we can get some gloves and some closed toe shoes. Right. <laughs> right. right. You got to get your feet. damn hair done. You got to get it. Yes. Absolutely. All right. All right. Here we go. Would you have? Would you rather have lunch with your ex or mow your entire yard by yourself? Shirley, you go and then I'll go. Shirley. I'm having lunch with my ex. <laughs> Jesus. What? Mm. Shirley I'm getting having in this lunch yard. with my ex. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not mowing the lawn. No. Call the entire him? yard? No. I will mow the entire lawn, edge it, <laughs> uh <-huh>. cut the <laughs> shrubbery, plant pull the roses, <laughs> pull weeds, go to the yeah. back. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Sand blast that, the house. Yes. <laughs> Pressure and put a new roof drive. on the garage. <laughs> Before I have lunch with my ex. Yes, it's sir. Just Thank lunch. you, Steve. Thank it's you, just bro. lunch. Uh-uh. Surely all right, all right. I don't care. I'm not no. doing all of that. <laughs> all right. Would you rather be filthy rich with no friends mm. or a hard worker with lots of friends? Oh. We're are, we're already B. Uh, yeah, <laughs> who wants that? We seen that yeah. movie, right? Yeah. We're already yeah. B. You don't need no friends. Filthy rich, but no friends. With no friends. Yeah. There you go, ladies. You don't need friends. Take a page out of Steve Harvey. <laughs> yeah. <book>. Yes. <laughs> 
follow Get your husband, lead. kids, go on somewhere and sit your ass down. <laughs> A friend list. I'm cool. Right. With it. All right. Would you rather get quality sleep every night or have mm-hmm. great sex every night? B. I'm going to go with yeah. B. B. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, get it. Get yeah, it. me too. B. Yeah, B. Yeah, Don't stop sleep. sleep. That's That's good it. One, y'all. You can sleep when you're dead. Sex, I'm going to sleep anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love his comeback. I know. <laughs> that is the International Women's Day version of Would You Rather. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. All you right, we'll be back to um, close out the show and do our last break right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this International Women's Day. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. We love you. Happy International Women's Day to you, Carla, to you, Monica. Happy International Women's Day to you, too, Shirley, Monica. We hold it down every day. Yes, we do. And we want to shout (laughs) out all the women listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There's some soldiers. There's some strong women out there. We see you. We salute you. We And we love you. We mm-hmm. know what y'all are going through, and yeah. we love y'all. Y'all get up every day and keep Thank it going, you so holding much. it down. What yes. about the women haters? You want to say anything to them? Not at all. Not <laughs> at all. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's that's where I draw the line. If we, you see you. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> yeah, we see you hate. We see you. <laughs> that's all. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it's all good. It was a fun I day today. You know, my closing remarks is really uh, complimentary. I don't have the makeup that women have. I could not do half the things that they do. And if you think about it, fellas, neither can you. Could you really take all that they have to take? Could you really? Could you put up with all they have to put up with? Think about who we are as men. Just think about who we really are. I'm just talking to fellas right now. And honestly, who all we are. And I'm including myself in this group. Of all of who we are, do you know what a woman has to do to tolerate that? Now, fellas, before you start comparing, well, they tough too. Yes, they are. They are more than a notion. Please don't think you finna get one and this is finna be happy sailing. You, 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 you finna get your hands on something right there. But then again, ain't it worth it? Ain't it worth it? As difficult as they can be, Ain't it worth it? But now let's talk about why they are difficult oftentimes. Oftentimes they are forced to be what we put them in a position to be. We don't like women who are so independent, but we've left them alone so many times they had no choice. We don't want women to be snappy and would come quick would, would come back with quick comebacks, but We've talked to him crazy. You know, you want a woman to be submissive, but then you ain't giving them nothing to submit to a lot of times. You know, a lot of women would let you lead if you would show leadership qualities. I'm not talking about all men because there's a lot of good men out here. And there's a lot of great women out here, but we got to give them credit where credit is due now. Because if you had to do everything that they do, if you had to tend to all of the things that they take the time to tend to, if you had to nurture everybody that they nurtured, your parents, her parents, the kids, the grandkids, 
what's happening up at the school, what's happening down at the soccer game, PTA meetings, going here, delivering your kids, taking your kids, all these extra groups. If you had to do all of that, how much of that would you really get done? I know I couldn't. I couldn't. Could you have taken what they've taken throughout our history? Could you watch your men and family get sold off? Could you watch that low-down slave master coming there to have his way with her? Could you Could you do that and still be standing? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think you could. They've had to be stronger than strong. And now that we've said all that, and I haven't even began to explain to you how difficult it must be for them to try to climb the corporate ladder in a man's world, oh, my God. Because we saw Mel's. The casting couches. Yeah. You mad at, you mad at, we mad at the Me Too movement, but we created the Me Too movement. We had to bring it, they had to do something because there was so many Weinsteins out there just doing what they, Jeffrey Epstein's, they had to come up with something. Man, half the stuff you mad about, women's lib, they had to come up with something. They won't equal pay because they've been underpaid. You want all that? Now let's talk about just the real deal. They give us namesakes. They give us bloodlines. They give us, they populate the world. On top of all that I've said to you, they got the nerve to have the ability, the only ones who can make a human life. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. And I can honestly say, I don't have the wherewithal to do half of what they do. I'm a hard worker. I'm a great provider. I'm an incredible protector. But the list of stuff that they have to be that makes us who we are, that allows us to be who we are, the things that they have in their makeup that makes everybody's life better around them, your child's life is better because of her, your life is better because of her, you look better because of her. You dress better because of her. You eat better because of her. You walk into a house that makes you feel better because of her. Wow. It's a lot, man. It's a lot that women do. I don't think this day is enough. They ought to have a women's year. Because they do a lot, man. They really, really do. Like Mother's Day ought to tell you. that Mother's Day ought to give you a sign of what it really is. Look at Mother's Day compared to Father's Day. You know why it's that way? Because it should be that way. Their day is so much bigger because they do way more things than we do, fellas. And that's just being honest about the whole thing. So happy International Women's Day to all the women out there. And keep on doing what you're doing with your bad self. Keep on being strong with your strong self. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm glad I ain't one of y'all. Because y'all do it so much better than we would. Thank you for being who you are. Those are my closing remarks today. Uh, Hey, listen, y'all. Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you. All right, cool. Y'all have a great day. Happy Women's Day, everybody. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Get ready. Stuff They Don't Want You to Know is back in iHeartland for another epic event. Ben, Matt, and Noel from Stuff They Don't Want You to Know are hitting the big screen in iHeartland on Roblox. This time, they're celebrating some of the most important people in our lives, teachers. Join the guys as they educate us about our educators and celebrate Teacher Appreciation Day all week long. Head to State Farm Park in iHeartland on Roblox starting Thursday, June 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern. Visit iHeartRadio.com slash iHeartland to start playing today. 
What if I told you there was more to the story behind game-changing events? Get ready for my new podcast, That Moment with Damon John. Every Tuesday on the Black Effect Podcast Network, we'll jump into the personal stories of some of the most influential people on the planet, from business moguls and celebrities to athletes and artists. Join me every Tuesday for That Moment with Damon John on the Black Effect Podcast Network, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever. Wherever you go to get your podcasts.